today is um, infection day and uh, the first is uh, on analysis of periprosthetic joint infection and the second one uh, later on is on treatment so analysis uh, i have um, the following contact uh, content uh, so the first uh, two slides will be more general slides and after that we will talk a bit on definitions of uh, uh, periprosthetic uh, joint infections. Uh, then we have a, a large part of diagnostics. Uh, is not one single diagnostic tool. Uh, I think it's a potpourri of uh, a lot of different uh, things you have to combine. Then uh, we'll talk a bit on new technologies and tests that are already available or will be available in the near future. And um, then I think uh, something very important, which everybody um, should develop for his own hospital uh, uh, is an algorithm. Now, of course, you can get some guidance from the uh, literature, but it uh, should be uh, always adapted to your local situation. And then of course, a short summary. So in general, um, something that hasn't changed over the time, unfortunately. Uh, infection is still the most common cause for early failures, uh, independent whether we talk on knees or on hips, it is uh, the most common uh, cause for early failures. And uh, down here you see the uh, papers from, from Peter Sharkey, where he combined his uh, series from 2002 and 2012 and you see there are some reasons that uh, came down a lot, uh, maybe due to training like instability or uh, arthrofibrosis or polyethylene wear, uh, but some other uh, topics um, increased and uh, especially infection. It, it was uh, quite a high bar in, in the 2002 analysis. Uh, 10 years later, it is definitely the bar with the highest uh, percentage in the early revision of up to 40 percent. So that um, leads to the general recommendation that we always have to think of infection and we have to rule out infection. Every joint that is coming to your office uh, not uh, working uh, well, uh, infection should be ruled out. A bit on prevalence, um, on um, uh, first the general numbers, these are US numbers. You see here that is the uh, numbers of treatments total hip. That one increased from around 100,000 in the uh, 90s, uh, almost 20 years later to uh, double the numbers to 200,000. Um, the knee at that time started also at 100,000 and now is up to more than 500,000 in 2007 and the numbers over the last years further increased. The very, um, uh, yeah, a bit frustrating number is shown here on the right side in, in that graph. So very simultaneously, even in a higher uh, percentage, we have an increase in the infected total hip arthroplasty. So increasing from 1,000 to around 3,000 and uh, from 1,000 in the uh, total knees to more than 6,000. So that, that means that we don't have an increase only because of an increasing market, also because infection is percentage-wise um, increasing. So first of all, I think we should talk a bit on definitions. There are some definitions on the, um, uh, in the literature. So different classifications. Very important is, um, I think, the time aspect. Every acute early infection is defined as an infection that comes within the first six weeks after the implantation of the, uh, of the implant. They have acute symptoms, um, normally including fever, uh, red, um, uh, uh, skin around the uh, hip or a knee and a very high uh, CRP uh, in the blood 
um, measurement. The acute late infectious is from symptoms wise uh, very similar, but it is defined as an acute infection that is later than three months after the index surgery. So that, that can also occur after five years or 10 years. So um, that is also an acute infection. Opposite to those two acute infections, we have chronic infection. And this is the, the reason number one, chronic infection starting um, after the six weeks period, they only have minor um, uh, lab alterations and also minor symptoms from the patient side. But one of the symptoms is in chronic uh, persisting pain. Um, so these are the infections harder to diagnose than, of course, uh, the acute infections. This is the classification from the uh, American Association. So they, it's quite similar. Um, I think they have added the type one, which is maybe not uh, mentioned in the uh, old classification there. So type one is a positive intraop culture after a revision procedure. So those are misdiagnosed infected cases, chronic infected cases um, that uh, became obvious during the revision procedure. And the rest uh, is, is very much the same. Like you see above, type two is an acute uh, early infection. Type three is the acute late or hematogenous uh, infection. And type four, the chronic infection. The time frames are a bit different. And uh, so in the older one, it was six weeks. Now it's uh, shorter than a month. And uh, the more recent publications on um, classifications have shortened that period to three or, uh, two or three weeks.